everyone. Welcome to tonight's Virtual Writers Workshop. My name is Salim. I will be serving as your host tonight and will help navigate questions. Our topic tonight is creative writing. And in this workshop, you will learn creative writing techniques from author and editor Maisie Sparks. Uh, there will be some writing exercises tonight. So make sure you have uh, a paper and pen or your computer so you can participate. Before I introduce Maisie, I do want to share a few updates about the library. So we are um, open and back to our regular hours. Um, but if you don't feel comfortable coming into the library just yet, we are continuing our curbside delivery service. This is where you can request items at home and pick them up in front of the library during designated hours. So for more information on that, you can visit champagne.org slash curbside. Uh, if you have questions for staff, there are a few ways you can connect with us. You can schedule a consultation with one of our experts. So to do that, you go to champagne.org slash book a librarian. Uh, you can chat with us anytime we're open. Our chat feature is located on our website at the bottom of the page. And you can also email us at librarian at champagne.org. I'd also like to share a few instructions for communicating through Zoom tonight. So depending on your device at the bottom of the screen towards the center, you should see the option uh, to chat, which is, will allow you to type your question in. Next to that is the option to raise your hand. Uh, this is if you prefer to use your microphone and we can unmute you. Uh, we appreciate if you can hold all your questions for Maisie until the end of her presentation and she will address them then. With that said, I'd like to now introduce our presenter. Maisie is a journalism graduate of the University of Illinois. She currently serves as the editorial director of the Sparks Group, a marketing communications firm she formed more than 20 years ago. During the past five years, her works Christmas Quiet, 151 Things God Can Do, and Holy Shakespeare have been published by Faith Words, a division of Hatchet Book Group. She has created and provided writing workshops for numerous organizations, including several women's groups and nonprofit organizations on various topics such as how to se successfully self-publish a book, how to secure a traditional publishing contract, and how to meld the art and business of writing. Tonight, she's here to share her creative writing techniques with all of us. Maisie, thank you so much for being here, and I will turn it over to you. Hey, thank you very much. I'm gonna share my screen now. Oops. Hold on a second. Uh. Okay, I'm there. Okay, good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you, Salem, for inviting me to be here this evening. It's a pleasure to have the opportunity to share a few things about the creative writing process and how to bring more creativity to the writing we produce. So I thank you to be, for being here, and I believe we're in for a fun and informative time, especially as you are willing to share some of the creativity you have with the group this evening. As Salem has noted, I'm a writer. I write for a living and I write for enjoyment. I've always enjoyed writing. I kept a diary when I was a teenager and then stopped keeping track of and reflecting on my life about 20 years ago. That's when I started keeping a journal, which is just an adult name for a diary. Professionally, I write for corporations, producing newsletters, annual reports, magazine articles, and executive speeches. I've had five books published and I have had my writing included in three anthologies. For me, all writing is creative, no matter what I'm writing. It could be a letter to my sister, a complaint letter to a company, 
or an article for a newspaper. Writing is how I learn. Writing is how I unscramble all this stuff that's running around in my head and try to come to some concise and clear way to express myself. I often say that writing is my first language. I prefer to write way more than speak, but here I am speaking. Truth is, I wrote down a lot of what I'll be sharing this evening. Well, let's find out a little bit about you. Let's see who's here tonight by taking a quick poll. Can you tell me where you are in your writing process? There should be a poll that comes up on the screen. There it is. So check one of those boxes and let me know if you have already published a book, if you just finished writing it, if you're working on it, if you have an idea for a book, or if you're just curious about being a more creative writer. You'll have about 30, sentence, uh, 30 seconds to answer, um, to check one of those uh, circles there. You can go ahead and do that now. Can we get those results now, Salem? Wow, okay, good. Well, I see we have a lot of first timers here, people who are creative about, who are curious about being a creative writer, and that's good. I think this, uh, this evening is going to give you some steps uh, that you can take to achieve your writing goals by bringing more creativity to your writing. Um, and hopefully maybe uh, some ideas that will help you get your work published in case that's something you'd like to do. So thanks for uh, participating in the poll. So now let's look at our evening. I thought that tonight we'd, um, no, let me go back. I thought that tonight we'd look at some, we'd look at creativity through a creativity building exercise that will give us uh, some time to use our imaginations. We'll also learn about creativity from the questions you ask. You can drop your questions in the chat room at any time, and we'll take a few minutes at the end of the presentation to look at them. Hopefully, I will have some answers from, for you but as I have often experienced, someone else here tonight might have a good answer as well. I wrote my first book, which I self-published about 25 years ago. And when I reflect on where the creativity came from to write that book and everything else I've written for that matter, I have to say that my creativity comes from listening. We human beings are or were listeners long before we became writers. And I believe listening is where writing still starts. We listen for what is said, but we also listen for what is not said. We listen when we look at the things around us and we ask not just what they are, but what they mean and what they are trying to tell us about our lives right in this moment. Recently, I was on a Zoom call. And something that is said reg regularly on these calls and my imagination went to work. I thought about individuals being mute muted 
And that became the genesis of a headline and the theme for an article I was writing about a social justice issue. Creative writing starts by noticing, reflecting, combining, segmenting, rearranging the things we see and hear and feel and touch. We listen for what sounds interesting, what is a play on words, what makes us curious. Right now, I'd like for us to dive into this idea of creativity through listening. By listening to this photo that's uh, on the slide, what is this photo saying to you? If you were going to write about this photo, what would you want your readers to hear, to see, to smell, to touch. Actually, this is our first exercise. I want you to write um, one sentence that is the first sentence of the first chapter about a book that centers on this photo. Have fun with it. Be outlandish. Use the photo as a trigger to get you started and let the photo take you to your fictional story in any way you would wanna go. I'm gonna give you about five minutes. And I know writing one good sentence can take more time than that, but try not to stifle your thoughts. Go with what something that can be shared with the group a group that includes young folks and older folks. You'll know when the five minutes it's up because the music will end and then we'll gather and we're gonna share some of our sentences. Okay, let's gather again. Uh, first, let me make a little disclaimer. Um, I took more than five minutes to write that uh, first sentence when I was doing this exercise. Um, and I kept tweaking it as I continued to edit the presentation. So I basically just asked you to do something that I didn't do. I'm just trying to keep myself honest here. But um, this is the fictional sentence that I wrote. Um, in five minutes and then some. And this is what I wrote. I listened for the breath that whispered, I'm still alive. That's how I'm gonna start uh, the book, this fictional book that I'm writing, which uh, this picture is uh, triggering for me. So how about you? Who would like to share their um, first sentence? I'm gonna ask, uh, Salem to either look in the chat room or see who's raising their hands and then you can uh, share your sentence. Yes, we do have uh, one hand raised. Um, Pauline, I'm going to unmute you so you can share. Okay, you are unmuted. Uh, if you're not quite ready, then I will call on the next person. Um, Rhonda, if you are ready, I will unmute you. Oh, looks like she took her hand down. So let's call on Wanda. Wanda, if you are ready, you are unmuted.
Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I wrote, I've fallen, but I'm not defeated. Okay, thank you. Good start. We also had um, a couple come in through chat that I will read out. Um, one participant shared, um, take one second to understand the sand felt like the moon and the waves sent our thoughts to the sky. Okay. Very nice, thank you. Another participant shared, as Rita laid on the cool ground, exhausted but proud, she couldn't believe she accomplished her one mile goal. <laughs> <laughs> that may not be very far from the truth. Thank you for that. <laughs> okay, Pauline, I will unmute you. Okay, you are unmuted, so you can share whenever you're ready. I don't hear Pauline, so we'll go to the next person. Uh, Denise, if you want to share your sentence. I don't know what's going on. Oh, there's can Pauline. I can hear you. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, I wrote that I'm exhausted, but I press on. Okay, good. I like that. Well, if there are no others, Salem, we'll, we'll move forward. Okay. I'm, uh, should I? Do you mind? Oh, yes, go ahead, Susan. Okay. Um, after, Susan, after Susan survived her cancer, she committed to being healthy and took a year to prepare for the challenging marathon um, she just finished. So proud, tired, and a much healthier, happier, and better woman for her efforts. Oh, that's wow. good. Awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, I have, for a, I have oh, a comment. Okay. Can you okay, hear me? Go ahead, Denise. Okay. I smell, but I don't care because I did not trip in the sand and I won the race. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Very nice. Thank you very much. Thank each of you for sharing those. They were wonderful. Great starts to go, what's going to be some interesting books there. Um, we're going to go forward to creativity. The best-selling author, Malcolm Gladwell, responded to some criticism of his work. Some critics had said that he oversimplifies difficult and complex concepts. And Gladwell replied that his aim is to make information accessible. His goal is to give access, not build barriers through his writing. Now, I'm not going to take sides on the debate because for me, it's not either or, it's both and. We need all types of writing for all kinds of audiences. Depending on the need and the audience, your writing will take the necessary shape, form, it said, follows function. And for our purposes this evening, we want to be creative, to stretch our imaginations while perhaps making our stories credible and enjoyable to read. Now, sometimes our creativity will come from inside of us, our thoughts, our feelings. And sometimes we do some research, weaving in facts statistics, or history, or even eyewitness accounts to build out our story. And our imaginations. So take a moment now. On the slide are some facts about what to do if someone faints. 
You can choose to use these facts or not in our next exercise. But think about some ways to add some realism to your story. Here's our woman again. What's going on with her? And is that a slab of rock? What do you think it is? Where is she? Did she slip and fall? Was she pushed? What are those legs doing back there? Okay, I'm gonna give you five minutes to add three to five sentences to the first sentence you wrote. You can come up, you can use these facts or come up with your own alternative facts. We'll be back together in about five minutes um, and you'll know the time because the music will stop. And uh, I'll start off the sharing by um, reading the fictitious sentences I wrote. I had made it the top of the mountain, but at what price? This is not the hill I want to die on, but today it is my place of rest. So that's how I continued my story. Now let's hear from some of you. Would anyone like to share how they continued their story of this woman on perhaps a slab of rock? Salem, I'll let you take over right through here. Yeah, we have a few people raising their hands, so I will uh, unmute them. I will start with, let's see, Sharva. You can speak whenever you're ready. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. After what seemed like five minutes of resting, Rita tries to get up. She immediately felt dizzy and faint. She fell back on the ground with panting like breaths. Afraid that she was having an asthma attack, she began searching her pockets for her, her inhaler. It was not there. She began to panic because it must have fallen out during her jogging, or while she was jogging. Wow, nice. I'm curious. And I liked how you added uh, your own facts there. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I will uh, unmute Denise. Denise, you can talk whenever you're ready. Can't hear you yet, Denise. You can always chat if your microphone is not working. Um, okay, is that better? Oh, yes, I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, my fellow runners thought I was crazy because I smile before, during, and after I run. My coach thought I did not push myself hard enough because I did not have to vomit at the end of the marathon. What is the fun in that? I would make him clean my shoes and hold my hair if I did throw up. Okay. Thank you. I love the creativity there. Okay, now uh, Rhonda, I will unmute you. Okay, thank you. Should I read my first sentence? Sure, yes. It's up to you, sure. Okay. Uh, by the ocean, she finally experienced peace as the crashes of ocean waves removed the sound of the bad news. She knew what the outcome would be, the bad news that finally came, but hearing it suddenly pushed her into a, a picture of anguish and despair. She led relatively a peaceful life with her husband and sons they were high achievers, but they never dreamed of the trouble that they would face. 
Wow. I want to hear more. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, next we have Wanda. Okay. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm being tested. I will reward myself with a timeout. Okay, good. Thank you for that. And then we have um, Susan to read hers out, and then I have a few in chat that I'll read out. So okay. Susan, whenever you're ready. Hi. Um, okay. Sally checked Susan's breathing, and it was hard and labored. She asked Susan if she could hear her, and Susan replied, yes. Are you all right? Sally said. Ask. Yes, Susan said, just utterly exhausted and happy. I think I hyperventilated and then tripped on this rock. Can you move all your parts, Sally asked. I'll give it a shot, Susan said, and started moving arms and legs. Can you see me, <coughs> Sally asked. Yes, Susan said, but you are a little blurry. What is your name? Who is the president? And what day and date is it? Susan answered everything, but Sally noticed her eyes were, were dilated. Wow. Okay. I love how you um, had the, uh, uh, some dialogue going there as well as um, brought in some other uh, facts. Thank you for that. And what's in I the got, chat? Yeah, I got all the ones that wanted to speak, so now I'll read a few of the ones in chat. So this one is from Rick, and it says, the air was cool, but the stone of the mountain held the warmth of the sun. Mama laid down on the stone and took its warmth in. Her breathing became slow and shallow. I think Mama was falling asleep. I'm hungry. I want to head back and eat the food she fixed. How could she be falling asleep on me? Well, it was sort of a hard climb to this point. She was up half the night with Grams. I guess I can give her a few minutes to rest. I sure am looking forward to that picnic she made. Nice. Very nice. Uh, I like mm -hmm. how people go in so many different ways with this. That's called creativity. Go ahead, Salem. <laughs> and then from Enrica says, as I rest and celebrate the achievement, I'm grateful for all the encouragement from those around me, including my friend, who was with me all the way to this point. Nice, nice. I like that. Thank you. Okay, and then two more okay. uh, from Sharva. After what seems like five minutes of resting, Rita tries to get up. She immediately felt dizzy and faint. She fell back onto the ground with panting like threats. Afraid that she was having an asthma attack, she began searching her jacket pockets for her inhaler. It was not there. She began to panic because it must have fallen out while she was jogging. Good. Good additional facts there, bringing some uh, realism to it. Thank you very much. And one more? One more. Uh, so from Keila, my head was spinning and I wanted to dive into that sea. For a moment, I was not there, but I soon heard footsteps around me. Good. Thank you. Yeah. She brought those uh, blue tennis shoes into the story. Very nice. Okay. We'll move forward. You should write your story, even if you're the only one who will ever read it. Um, I met the author of those words, Michelle Weldon, when our sons were on the same high school wrestling team. At that time, she was a journalism professor at Northwestern and offered workshops on writing across the country. One Friday night, sitting on the bleachers waiting for the next match to begin, I told her that I had um, read her book and that sentence had spurred me into action. In fact, I think it was around this time that I started journaling again 
and writing just for the enjoyment of it. In fact, one of my books, Christmas Quiet, started as little journal entries and other short writings that I had created about ordinary events in my ordinary life. I've come to believe that our own lives are rich with story ideas if we would only notice and harvest them. So now I'd like to add a little exercise, a tool if you will, that can help us capture creative moments from our own lives. And then if we want to, we can use these little moments in our writing. It's a three-part process then that you can complete in five minutes. And here's how it goes. I'm making a quick list of what happened. You basically ask yourself, what were the events of the day? And an event can be as simple as waking up in the morning, or it could be major, like winning a Nobel Prize. And it could be anything and everything in between. You can look at your day by listing the events that were joyful, inspiring, and hopeful. But as we all know, everything in every day isn't life-giving. But those events are worth writing down just as well. They can be really rich fodder for our writing. Let me give you an example. Last year, I wrote an article for a book about self-care. And the title of my chapter was A Feast of Losses. In it, I shared stories about individuals who had experienced the pain of divorce, infertility, losing people they love, severe illness, and loss of jobs. I wrote about how they cared for the spiritual dimension of their lives during some very hard times. Lost emotions, questions, and examples to bring to our writing. Now, during the second part of this exercise, we look at what we might have done better during the day. I call these missed opportunities. Now, they could be very personal things like, I missed an opportunity to be kind, and I write about just how really rude I was. Or I could jot down the embarrassing truth that I hollered at my son when I should have been listening to him. Or it could be simple like, I just forgot to follow up on a business lead. Or I didn't work on the book idea like I said I would. We all have missed opportunities each day. And they can give us ideas for dialogues, scenes in a script, feelings that we can bring out in our writing. And then the last part of this exercise is I look forward and I imagine what I want to accomplish the next day. Imagination and goal setting helps us to bring into reality the aspirations of our hearts. I think this is really important. Imagination and goal setting helps us bring into reality the aspiration of our hearts. These are what I call, I call my passion projects. They're the writing I do even if no one else is going to read it. So we're gonna pause here and I'd like to give you some time to practice this tool. Take five music while the music plays to answer those questions. You don't have to write a lot, and you can just bullet point each of those sections if you want to. I'm not going to ask you to share this writing, so you can feel free to be very honest with yourself. The idea here is to see how quickly you can reflect on your day and see if anything emerges 
that you would want to weave into something you're writing. And even if you don't notice anything, this is still a great tool for getting to know what's going on with you and what's important to you. Okay, here's our next five minutes for writing. Okay, let's gather again and I'll share with you what I wrote. Does anyone hear me or is my panting drowning out my words? Are my eyes closed or have I entered the darkness that's the gift of the brightest of lights? I cry for help, but well, I didn't finish that sentence because I only had five minutes to write. But if I had some more time, I'd come up with something that takes me forward in the story. Um, I was honest for this exercise and I only took five minutes. So now I'd like to hear from you. Would anyone like to share their next three to five sentences? Salem, I'll let you take it from here. Yes, yeah, so we have uh, a couple people raising their hands, so I will unmute you. Rhonda, you are up first. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Now it seems only the waves could make the pain go away. She has no idea how to get up again and how to face tomorrow, but she only knows she has to find a way to go on for her two sons who were left behind and first and foremost for herself. Nice, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Susan, you are up next. Yes. Okay. Um, damn, Susan didn't want to go to the ER. She hated hospitals. People die there, as several of her friends had. But she must do what she must do so she can take care of herself and her wonderful fur babies, Charlie and Miles. They are the only beings that kept her going during cancer. She had to think about them, feed them, care for them, and her service dog, Charlie, was an amazing helper. He got her water from the fridge to take her pills and picked up stuff that she dropped on the floor. And Miles, bless his little heart, cuddled with her all day and all night. Love is what healed her then and what will heal her now. Wow, wonderful. Thank you for that. Yeah. You're really uh, stretching the boundaries of this picture. Thank you for that. Okay, Rick, you are up next. Hey Google, set a timer for 10 minutes. I'm gonna give mama 10 minutes to rest and then we've gotta go. 10 minutes and we're starting now. Side note, if you need an alarm in this room in the morning, I can do that too. Just say, set an alarm for 7 a.m. It's eight o'clock. That wasn't part of my writing. <laughs> okay. If I don't eat, I feel like I could pass out. Pulling the map out of his pocket, Jordan checked for the shortest trail back. Mama, Mama, get up. Scoutmaster said, if you stop for more than 20 minutes, your muscles will stiffen up and it'll be harder to get moving again. Come on, I have the shortest route back to lunch. Good. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, and Wanda, you are up next. Okay, push, pause, be pushed. When is it necessary? I need to get out of my own mind. How and when should I do this? Good, thank you. Taking that uh, deeply internal, that's a nice way to go too. Hey, Sheila, you are up next. 
Okay. Oh my, ma'am, are you okay? Ma'am, are you okay? Shaking her to open her eyes. I can help, I am a nurse. Open your eyes. Take a deep breath. I will get help. Nice, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Lakanda, I will unmute you if you want to read yours. Well, while we're waiting for Lakanda, I will read out one of the ones from the chat. Okay. So, uh, from Keela, it says... Hello, mom, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can I'm hear you. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. As I observed the woman lying on the ground, I became overwhelmed with concern about her well-being. I rushed over to offer my assistance. She made me aware that she was fine, just taking a moment to enjoy the sweet victory of completing her running goal. We laughed and parted. And as, as I reflected on the encounter, I began to feel, uh, I, I began to feel inspired. Thank you for that. Very good, thanks. Okay, and then I'll share two from the chat. Okay. Uh, so from Keela, it says, my mom asked me if I was okay, and I said, yes. I opened my eyes with happiness because I was at peace. I was finally in a place that renewed my energies, in nature, outdoors. I wanted everyone to be able to feel it, lose their worries, and focus on the greatest personal fulfillment that is love for oneself and for others. Good. Awesome. Thank you for that. And from Sharva, Rita immediately realized being anxious would make her situation worse. She remembered her friend Sharva always telling her to keep calm during stressful situations. Sharva was a master at keeping calm when facing adversity. Her mantra was, keep calm so you make rational decisions. You can manage this. Rita began calming down to think about the techniques her doctor told her to utilize if she had an attack. And, and her inhaler was not in her possession. Good. I like how those stories have just continued and developed and built out. All of those were wonderful. Thank you. Now we'll move forward. Um, those were all very uh, creative stories. Um, and though fictional, they had much uh, creativity and there were ways that you guys just really brought some interest and curiosity to um, that photograph. Uh, I'd like to tell you what really happened. <laughs> As you can see there, that's a picture of me. I was the lady on the rock, and that was a couple of years ago. A friend half my age uh, talked me into climbing Stone Mountain in Georgia. It's not a long walk but it's mostly climbing at a 45 degree angle. I didn't faint, but I was very tired. And thankfully I had the good sense to rest and get revived before taking the walk down. Obviously I live to tell about it, but reflecting on the event, as you can see, became the content, the starting point for some creative writing for you and me. And one of the things that you might be able to take away from this exercise is when you're stuck sometimes and, you know, what do I write about? How do I move forward? Um, you can get some images uh, from pictures, from, you know, scenery outside. Just get that to kind of get your creative writing juices flowing and just take your uh, thoughts from there and keep going. And that's exactly what you guys did this evening. Thank you for that. Well, we've come to the end 
And I hope that you have enjoyed these writing exercises and had some fun this evening. I know that good writing, creative writing, is not this fast and furious. Um, as the author uh, Maya Angelou said, easy reading comes from hard writing. It takes time to write something you love and time to write something that other people are going to want to read. But as we practice different creative writing exercises, I really believe that you will find writing to be an enjoyable and rewarding practice. So what I'd like to do now, if you've had any questions about um, the exercises we had this evening or questions about writing or publishing, um, if you drop them into the chat room, um, uh, Salem will take them from there. Or if you raise your hands, uh, I'll take a crack at trying to answer them for you. Salem, is there anything in the chat room? Uh, yes. So, so far, one comment uh, says, thank you very much. It was very inspiring. Uh, Denise is raising her hand. So, Denise, uh, the floor is yours if you want to ask a question. And while Is we're waiting, hello, hello. Yes, yes. Go ahead. We can hear you. Hi. I appreciate you sharing your knowledge. Uh, not everybody's willing to do that. And I had a question. I have hundreds of ideas running through my head. Where should I start? <laughs> um, well, you can write about the one hundred ideas that are writing through your head. That's one place. Um, I would say that um, just choose one and see where you where where you go with it. You, you have to start somewhere. Um, give yourself a few minutes every day to just uh, write a little bit about one of those and, and see if more and more emerges from that practice. But don't let that stop you from writing. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. A writer is someone who writes. So give yourself some time to write each day. Thank you. Okay, Susan, the floor is yours. Hi. Um, Hi. I'm, oops, I'm going to try it again. Hi. I really enjoyed uh, your presentation. And um, I have a question. Uh, I've made out my outline for my story. I've got my idea. Um, but I, I, I keep write, rewriting and I got different, new and different ideas about different scenes and we're, we're following here and following there. And I, I feel like I'm in a jumble of unorganization now. I'm not sure how to, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to just get my outline and then write, uh, a few paragraphs under each little place. I guess I, I'm just not sure where how to get organized on this, uh, you know, go from place chapter to chapter to, to conflict to sub-conflict to whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, um, as, as you'll see on the slide that I think is still up there, um, that's really part of the writing process. We write and we rewrite and we let it kind of sit for a minute and simmer. Mm -hmm. We okay. go back, and we review and we edit and then we write some more and we repeat those steps. So okay. it, as you go through that uh, process, you are changing things and at the same time, it is improving. So yeah. uh -huh. don't, don't be uh, discouraged by that. That is the process. Okay. Um, okay. If, uh, what, you, what might be helpful too is to, you talk about the, um, you don't think it's as organized. Go well, back I've, 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 I've written this one scene, one scene, you know, four or five times on different pages on my book. So I'm like, 
Okay, now now do I I have to combine all those to to a new one? <laughs> okay. okay. Somehow, yeah. Somehow, uh, yeah. I I would just encourage you to to keep at it. Um, okay. It, it will. It will, but you have to uh, stick with it. Okay. All right. Because that's the process. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So we have uh, one question in the chat. Uh, they're asking, first of all, thanks for everything. I love the writing practice. They're asking, I would like to know how I can start writing and how to plan a story. How to start writing? Yes, how, do, how can I start writing and how to plan a story? Um, to start writing, I would say you, you want to set a time each day, whether it's 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, and that's your writing time. As far as the idea, the idea is something that's going to come from your creativity, something that you have seen, heard, um, had an interest in, um, that's that's the gift that you're going to bring to your writing is is your idea your feeling your thought and then you're going to build out on that and and so however you want to do that that is what's going to make you the writer and the author because they're your ideas now i'll also say coming from more of a journalist Not, not other people give me things to write, so I already have um, my topic or subject that I'm going to write about. But when, when I'm just writing for pleasure, I am probably writing about things that happen to me or someone I know or a family member or something like that. So the idea comes from you. Was that helpful? Is, did that answer your question? She said yes. Okay, good. A lot of comments saying they enjoyed the presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we do have someone raising their hand. Uh, Rick, the floor yeah. is yours. Thanks. Um, this was a good exercise because my project actually, which prompted me to sit in to, tonight, is writing a film script. And it's, um, it's a, a film script for a documentary that I'm making in the Ken Burns style of documentary film. Um, and it's about my grandmother's photo album, which she began keeping as a young girl in school in the very early 1900s. She died in 1938, 22 years before I was born. So, and, and all of the next generation after her is gone now. Uh, my mother was the last one who just died last December uh, at the age of 93. Her mother died when she was 10. So I'm actually reading the photos and making up a story about my grandmother's life. And yeah. uh, that was an interesting exercise. And I, I went very realistic and I read the photo pretty well, I think, given yeah. the, the following photos that you displayed. It was just a rest during a hike. Right. A mountain. And you were probably hungry and ready to go back and eat. <laughs> more, more needing some water. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm also, so I want to write a story that's um, believable and realistic and genuine um, that, that would sort of be a typical story from this photo album, but I don't know how to uh, insert any of the typical storylines or plots or um, conflicts or anything that, that make a story more interesting. Ken Burns has a very talented team of writers to write his films. 
Right. And uh, they have a big budget compared to my budget. Sure. So I need to sort of learn a little bit about creating that in the story to uh, make it as real as I can through my research, but also to make it interesting. And uh, sure. not having any creative writing experience, this seems like a undaunting uh, or a daunting task, but this right. was a good start for me. Sure. Um, I, I'm currently writing, uh, not writing, reading a book called um, The Nickel Boys. Um, I think it was a bestseller a couple years ago and I'm just getting around to it. But um, the, the author, I think his name is Colson Whitehead, uh, he writes a, a fictitious story about, um, uh, what would I call it, a home for boys in the early 1900s. And it is very much a weaving of fact and fiction. And so I would suggest to you that you find some authors who have done what you want to do and really study their work. Um, and if Ken Burns is, you know, what, who you want to pattern your documentary after, it's really, um, dissecting what he does and see how you can um, do that. Uh, maybe he's even written about how he go, how he approaches the work that he does. And that could help a little bit to um, help you in what you're trying to do with your, your work. Uh -huh. Could you say the title of the book again, please? It's The Nickel Boys, N-I-C-K-E-L. Okay. Thanks. Yes, I've been studying Ken Burns, and the, the reason I've chosen, I for a long time was going to do a website, but I realized I have a photo album, and that's about all I have. And, uh, you know, that style of documentary telling works real well for photographs. Yes. Photos. But the writing is a challenge. Yes. Well, thank you. The, the uh, exercise with reading a photograph was a very appropriate one for my project. Oh, good. Thank you. Okay, uh, Salem, should I turn this back over to you now? Uh, yeah, there was one more question I wanted oh. to read out. So, um, uh, they're asking, oh, are, are the anthologies Maisie has contributed to at the library? Um, we do have access to several of her books, yes, uh, through our interlibrary loan system. Um, we can also purchase them. So yeah, if you send us your request, we can get those titles in your hands. Okay. okay. I'm going to um, stop sharing and turn this over to you. Okay. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maisie. That was so interesting and engaging. It's a wonderful webinar. I do want to share um, one more update before we end our webinar tonight. So let me share this one moment. So um, our, our short story contest is open and taking submissions. Um, you can find more information at champagne.org slash short dash story there on the screen. Um, and you can also find uh, entry guidelines and prize information there as well. Our next workshop will be on October 7th, and that topic will be character development with Ekta Garg. So we are at the end of our workshop. Um, I want to say thank you again to, uh, to Maisie. That was wonderful. Thank you. A lot of great comments showing their appreciation. I think we got all the questions. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. With that, we'll call it a night. Good night, everyone. Thank you again for coming. Thank you and good night.